Videomaster launched the Master Case H500P in late 2017, and while it looks stylish with its pair of RGB 200mm fans at the front and a certain pleasant aesthetic, we quickly discovered it's not actually very good. In particular, that plastic front panel doesn't flow any air, but there are other issues. It will pretty much fall apart when you touch it, which isn't so bad if you want to get inside the case to build a PC, but it's problematic if you're trying to move it around when you've built a PC, for example. The 500P was upgraded to a mesh version, which made much more sense. It would now flow air, and there were other tweaks to the design as well. But it wasn't until they came up with the Mastercase H500M, which has a number of changes. Even though these two cases look superficially similar, they are actually quite different, not least because this has ARGB, addressable RGB, but other changes throughout the case. It has glass on both sides, which is a matter of personal taste, but behind Behind that glass you have a number of cable covers, so it actually looks fairly attractive. Around the rear of the case you have a panel so you can slide the power supply in from the back and don't have to go in from the side, and there are various tweaks like that throughout. Overall the H500M is a decent case, but I think I can make it better. At the heart of my plan is this distribution plate made by Barrow that I got from Alibaba and it's specific to the Cooler Master 500 case. The distro plate is going to go where we currently have this mounting plate, so let's pull that out. And with that cable plate out of the way we can see a series of mounting screws. it comes. And now the distro plate can go into place like so. The obvious question is what does this distro plate do? It's a series of chambers one two three four and the coolant will come from the CPU into this chamber here out into the radiator down into the main chamber there that's a fill port out of the main chamber into the pump, from the pump in here to this lower chamber, from there across to the graphics card, through the graphics card, back to this chamber here, up there, across to the CPU, and back to the distro plate. The Barrow distro plate is going to be acting as a kind of cooling hub within the case. Another major part of the deal is this motherboard, which is an MSI MPG Z490 Carbon EKX. Z490, Intel. Right now, Zen 3 from AMD is certainly the performance processor of choice, but you try buying a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9. If you can find one, you'll probably pay a premium. This Core i9-10900KF, on the other hand, is relatively speaking a value proposition. 10 cores, runs at 4.9 gigahertz. The KF doesn't have a graphics core. Ain't gonna be needing integrated graphics. The EK part of the equation is this monoblock. So that's going to cool both the VRMs and the CPU, and that is going to hook into the distro plate. It's going to make this build all about the cooling. The first step is to install the monoblock and processor on the MSI motherboard. EK doesn't provide paper instructions, it's all PDF. However, it's quite straightforward. Thermal pads go on the VRMs, processor obviously in the socket, and then on with the monoblock. And then we can also, if we choose at that stage, put the M.2 SSD and some G-Skill DDR4 memory in the board. Board then in the case. The top cover of the case is removed to reveal the radiator rack, out with the stock rear fan which has no RGB, and in with a 120mm EK Varda RGB fan. Then it's time for the radiator. It's an EK 360mm cool stream with three EK Varda 120mm RGB fans. The power supply is a Seasonic Prime Titanium 850 watt. Which slides in from the rear of the case. With the power supply installed, we can turn to cable management, which only takes a wave of the hand. Around the back of the case, we're using an EK Loop Connect to control the fans and RGB. The pump is this EK DDC 3.2, which I've already installed on Cooler Master's uh, bracket. 
that sits there. And then we have the distro plate. Barrow's installation instructions are pretty much non-existent. They show it in various photos on their website. But in essence, you get this piece of Velcro hook and loop material. It's really strong. And you stick one piece on the back of the distro plate and the other piece inside the case in a suitable position. The way of aligning it, as far as I can see, is that this point here feeds across to the CPU block and this point feeds back from the CPU block. It makes sense to keep that tube horizontal. I'm going to aim for having this G quarter thread here in line with the CPU block G quarters. With the distro plate installed, I can connect the pump outlet to the distro plate with fittings. At the top of the distro plate, the radiator is also connected with fittings. The second connection from the radiator to the distro plate is a 14mm acrylic tube. The outlet from the distro plate to the pump intake is a short 14mm tube. The graphics card is a Palette Gaming Pro GeForce RTX 3080. The GPU block is an AlphaCool Ice Block Aurora. After that, we turn to the four tubes that connect the graphics card and the mono block to the distro plate. And that's it, the loop is completed. At this stage, we could fill the loop, turn on the PC, cross our fingers and pray we don't suffer a catastrophe with liquid going absolutely everywhere. Happily, there's no need to take that risk because the MSI EKZ490 motherboard comes with a pressure tester, which essentially is a small bicycle pump. You pressurize the loop, wait a reasonable period of time, and provided it's holding pressure, you're good to go. If on the other hand, the pressure drops, and realistically that happens in a matter of seconds, then you wanna find the leak before you proceed. So pressure testing time. Connect the tester to your fill port. The gauge is graduated, so half an atmosphere gets you into the green zone, three quarters takes you into the red. We don't want to blow the system apart. And we pump it up just below the 0.75 atmospheres. Lock off the valve. Remove the pump, we don't need that. And now we're looking to see if that holds pressure. Looks like the loop is good. Coolant is EK Cryofuel Mystic Fog. That's it, I'm done. I set the lighting to white because that's my preference. However, it is RGB throughout, so I do indeed have all the options in the world. And here's a bit of rainbow marquee to keep you entertained. I've got multiple lighting systems going on inside this PC. The Barrow distro plate has its own controller. The monoblock on the motherboard by EK is connected to the EK Connect unit. That sentence does make sense, although it sounds like gibberish, along with the four EK fans. The two front fans by Cooler Master, they come with the case, are connected to the motherboard. The RGB for the two front fans by Cooler Master, the MSI motherboard, the G-Skill Trident Z raw memory, and also the AlphaCool GPU block are all controlled by MSI's Dragon Center software. So white, that obviously works perfectly well, and Rainbow Marquee also works perfectly well. If you've got some other more complicated RGB pattern in mind, you might find the various systems don't sync together perfectly. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. If you've seen a more light fantastic build in a Cooler Master H500 case, do please put a link below.